So you're going to have worsening endometriosis and fibroids. It puts the brain function further out of balance. And so you have irrational thoughts and irrational emotions. So that's what you get with estrogen dominance. You get excessive amount of growth and you get imbalances in moods and you get imbalances in emotions. And that's why you have the PMS two weeks before your period, because at that point, progesterone should be dominant. But if estrogen is more dominant, you're going to get imbalances and you're going to get those abnormal symptoms. What exercise seems to do, one, it produces endorphins. It produces a substance in your brain that makes you feel good. So even though you may have an imbalance of the estrogen and progesterone, you still is able to override it. Two, exercise increases metabolism, and it's going to increase the metabolism of any excess of hormones. So it's going to help you to metabolize the estrogen overload. The other thing exercise does is decreases stress. Whenever a person is under stress, stress seems to override all other hormone systems. So if a person is under stress, their reproductive hormones or estrogen and progesterone are not going to work as well. If you're able to relieve that stress with exercise, then the estrogen progesterone system seems to work better. Those seem to be the three major areas that exercise helps. Also, because estrogen is made in fat tissue, A person who is overweight is more likely to be estrogen dominant. We know that because women who are overweight are more susceptible to breast cancer. They're more susceptible to uterine cancer. And so if you exercise and you keep a healthy weight, you're going to be less likely to be a victim of estrogen overload. So exercise helps in several different areas. And that's why patients who do have estrogen dominance, they will tell you that exercise seems to curb their symptoms. Uh, It'll help with the PMS, all because it's helping to restore that estrogen-progesterone balance. Endometriosis is a condition where tissue inside the uterus that should shed every month with a menstrual cycle finds its way into the abdomen. And that tissue is greatly affected and is very sensitive to estrogen. And so what happens is people who seem to be more at risk for endometriosis are patients who have not had any children. Usually it is a person who's in their 30s or 40s who haven't had any children. Progesterone is very dominant during pregnancy, and progesterone our pregnancy and that abundance of progesterone is often curative of endometriosis. So we know that progesterone seems to help or eliminate endometriosis, and we know that estrogen and estrogen excess seems to stimulate the growth because this tissue is normally inside the uterus, and that grow message that is stimulated in that first part of the cycle stimulates the growth of this tissue. So if you are estrogen dominant, you're going to overstimulate this endometriosis tissue, and you're going to get severe cramps, you get increased risk of infertility, you're going to have heavy, excessive bleeding during your menstrual cycle, and so estrogen is going to cause endometriosis to be worse. Progesterone seems to calm that growth, calm the growth of the endometriosis. It seems to calm the pain, decrease the bleeding, because it is helping to balance out that stimulatory effect of estrogen. Now, fibroids are benign growths that are located in the uterus that enlarge the overall size of the uterus. Patients who suffer with fibroids usually complain of increased pressure in the lower abdomen, increased bleeding, more pain with their menstrual cycles. And again, estrogen's primary function is to make estrogen-sensitive tissue grow, and fibroids are sensitive to estrogen. So you are going to have increased fibroid growth if you have estrogen overload. And anything that you do to decrease your estrogen load is going to decrease the rate of growth of fibroids. If you're able to increase your fiber, exercise, lose weight, use progesterone, take vitamin supplements that help to metabolize estrogen, all of these strategies will help to decrease the growth of these estrogen-sensitive conditions. Fibrocystic breast is something else that, again, it's an abnormal growth. If it's a growth, estrogen is going to stimulate it. 
different factors that decrease estrogen or increase the balance between estrogen and progesterone, it's going to help decrease the growth of fibrocystic breasts. There was a study done that showed that topical progesterone cream decreased fibrocystic breasts and the pain from fibrocystic breasts in about 87% of the patients studied. So that if you understand the function of estrogen and progesterone and you understand what increases and decreases the amount of estrogen and progesterone, then you can start to make decisions that will help maintain or help restore that balance and then you're more in control of your health. Well, let's talk about low sex drive. Estrogen dominance will definitely decrease libido, a decreased sex drive. Again, It's a very delicate balance in women between estrogen and progesterone and testosterone in order for them to maintain a healthy sex drive. You also have to understand that if a woman is dealing with the problems of bloating, breast tenderness, irregular bleeding, fibroid growth, endometriosis, that is not going to make a woman feel very sexy. And so when she is dealing with that on a constant basis, the sex drive continues to decrease because of her uncomfortable feeling with her body. A lot of times patients will say they don't feel like themselves when they are out of balance. And if they don't feel like themselves, they're not going to respond normally to their family, to their husbands. And so they're going to come in with that complaint of a decreased sex drive. Also, because of the external stressors on women, they are under so much stress at home and at job, and then they, they're they having these physical stressors. When a woman is under stress, they are not going to be interested in sexual matters. When a man is under stress, sex relieves their stress. But for women, they have to be relaxed and feel good about themselves in order to want to participate in sexual activity. So Restoring that balance and helping her to feel better about herself and help her to uh, eliminate some of these very distressing symptoms that are caused by estrogen dominance is going to automatically increase her sex drive. And it's also been shown that progesterone has an effect on increasing sex drive. So decreased libido in a woman is a very complex.